to think about whether she really wants to go to Illinois or not, but she starts doing a little research, and she tells her sister, I've been studying up on Springfield, and, well, there's the guy who designed Lincoln's tomb. He was a famous sculptor who spent over half his time in Italy. Interesting. What else? Well, evidently, they have a Carillion festival every year. I could coincide with it. Do you mean a Carillon festival? Rachel asked. I don't know, it's some kind of bell tower, although I hate church music. Rachel popped a browser on her phone. I'm not sure the instrument is associated with religion necessarily. Together we reviewed a variety of structures. See, she said, some are freestanding. She searched for Springfield. But certainly a Carillion in the American heartland. Three syllables, Rachel said. It's called a Carillon. Look. Together we studied the tall tower skirted by a host of leafy trees. Rachel scrolled. Not only is Springfield's Carolyn freestanding, but it's in a park. That's fun. I pointed to the link for the website. We scanned the information. Wow, Rachel said, it has 67 bells, which makes it one of the biggest in the country. Who cares about the number of bells? I pointed to the paragraph about Thomas Reese, the man who funded the structure, publisher of the State Journal Register. What a better way to get into the School of Journalism than by writing about a famous journalist. So, Gina's on board for this trip, but she meets a Carolineur. So you know what you do when you write fiction is you blend fact and fiction together. So I have a friend, Mikhail, who's from the Netherlands, and uh, he's this handsome Dutch man, very stunning. Well, he became, in my book, Vlinder, an expert Carolineur. You know, if people wanted facts, they'd buy nonfiction. So, in, you know, better to have fun. So I make Vlinder fabulous, the best Carolineur ever. Almost as good as Carlo, but not quite. <laughs> He's around here somewhere. And popular. So this Vlinder has so many Facebook friends that Gina thinks he's probably an unfriendly snob. And he's not. She hears him give a talk about the Carillon when she's in Denver, and that's when she really learns about it. Okay, let me find this place about Denver. Uh-huh. Oops, lost my place. Um, let's see. Using video clips, Linder took us inside several carillons, including three from the Netherlands. Although the instruments differed, Linder demonstrated the general system of hitting the levers and working the foot pedals that rang the bells. I didn't catch every word. Sometimes I was distracted by his broad smile or his voice, which had a soothing sing-song quality. He spoke with his whole body, imitating the movements he, met, he used when performing. Occasionally he looked at me and smiled. I already felt like we understood each other. For a moment, I wished I were about to embark on a musical career so that I'd have even more excuse to spend time with him. However, I knew well enough from Rachel's endless hours of practicing that I didn't have the patience to be a musician, even if I had natural talent, which I didn't. But I knew enough to appreciate Blinder on a professional level. I suddenly realized that being a music critic would be a potential direction for a career. Because I wasn't a musician myself, I could be objective. Thanks to my family, I developed a genuine appreciation for the required skill and dedication. For the moment, though, all I had to do was appreciate the gorgeous blonde standing in front of me, the one who so often looked over and smiled. So, Gina has a double mission. She, uh, she's very interested in this Carol Lanour. But, of course, in fiction, things don't work out right. So, she starts to hear his first concert. And um, she's in Kansas City, so she's listening to him on the radio. And she starts listening to this concert, and she starts to get very 